right, there you see it, our matchup tonight, Kirk Johnson undefeated, 28-0, one draw. That, of course, was against Al Cole, 20 wins by way of knockout. Marcus Johnson, could it be Rocky here tonight, or will he go home 7-6? and six? Started off his pro career undefeated, won his first seven fights, but there he is, the Olympian. And, you know, Steve, it's been uh, quite a while uh, since Barcelona, but he keeps plodding along and looking for that shot. And, uh, you know, the question is, after seven years of going through this, you would think things are real easy. But does he still get butterflies? He had these thoughts yesterday. I'm scared to death because, you know, I've been working on uh, certain things in the gym. And, sure, on paper, it looks like I should have the easy victory. But that's not good enough for me. I can have an easy victory just doing what I want to do in the ring. But, you know, me and my coaching staff, we worked on particular things in the ring that we want to accomplish to take us to the next level. So tomorrow night, I'm looking to do the things that I used in the gym. If I do it tomorrow night, I'll be satisfied, then I can go to the next stage. Well, as the next stage, Lennox Lewis, as you see, he's back in the ring with Curtis Cokes, his original professional trainer. Happy to be back with Curtis, he says. And perhaps you'll we'll see a few different moves tonight from Kirk Johnson, some things that we haven't seen recently from him. There's Marcus Johnson, and boy, talk about an opportunity. Marcus Johnson coming in tonight with a 7-5 and five record. Of course, he's out of Gary, Indiana, a very tough part of the world as he describes it. But he gave us one of the best pre-fight interviews we've ever had on Explosion. He thinks he's going to pull, up the up, pull off the upset, and he told us how. I'm something different, and I'm about to show them something different. A guy five, seven and five about to come in front of your TV screen to knock out a rated heavyweight. You know, this is a shot that I shouldn't even be having, but I got it, you know. Something strange about to happen in the year 2000, and I'm one of them. I'm the first time. Watch how I do this. We're going to be watching, but uh, certainly a weight advantage tonight for Johnson, who comes in, though, at a career high 244. Maybe it's not an advantage. Three inch reach advantage. They're about the same age. So on paper, the physical matchup isn't that dramatic. We're fighting, of course, in New York tonight. Ten-point must system in effect. Standing eight count in effect. There is a three knockdown rule. You cannot be saved by the bell in any round. The doctor can stop the fight. And if there's an accidental head button, we're more than halfway gone. We're going to the cards. If not, it's a technical draw. And now the man who's going to tell us a little bit more about these pugilists. He's got all the answers because he wrote them down. I saw him earlier today. The magnificent Mark Biro. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Hammerstein Ballroom at the Manhattan Center in New York City as Cedric Kushner Promotions presents the Heavyweight Explosion New York City 2000. Your matchmaker is Ron Scott Stevens. Tonight's bouts are under the auspices of the New York State Athletic Commission, the chairman in attendance, Mel Southern. Commissioners, Rose Frentman and Mark Kornstein. The executive director also in attendance, Tony Russo, supervisors, Ralph Petrello, Bob Limerick, and Ray Locasio. The director of boxing also in attendance this evening, Bob Duffy, and the medical director for the State Athletic Commission is Dr. Billy Lathan. This is your first heavyweight explosion event of the evening, scheduled for 10 rounds. Your referee for this event from Lindenhurst, Long Island, New York, Carl Schroeder. Introducing the principals first, in the red corner to my left, wearing the white trunks with the red trim, he weighs in at 244 pounds. His professional record reads 28 victories, no defeats, one draw, and 20 wins coming by way of knockout he hails from North Preston, Nova Scotia, Canada. He is rated number 10 in the world by the WBA, number 8 in the world by the WBC and the IBF, and rated number 10 in the world by the prestigious Fight Game magazine. Introducing Kirk Johnson. Johnson. His opponent in the blue corner, wearing the blue trunks with the green trim, he weighs in at 238 pounds. His professional record reads, seven victories, five defeats, 
and six wins coming by way of knockout. He hailed from Gary, Indiana. Here is Marcus Clark Kent Johnson. Johnson, 10 rounds, heavyweight. I expect you both to abide by the rules of the New York Athletic Commission. Protect yourselves at all times, all sides, all times, and uh, protect yourself and also obey my command. Touch gloves. Well, he said protect yourself twice, so I guess he really means it. Maybe he was pointing that out to Marcus Johnson. This is not the Marcus Johnson who you ran up and down the court with, though. <laughs> no, it isn't. It is not MJ, Michael, Michael Jordan. This is a guy who's going to come in here. And hopefully, like he said, he wants to shock the world in the new millennium. Well, we've got Johnson and Johnson here tonight, not to be confused with the floor wax, so we're going to refer to them as Kirk and Marcus. And that's Kirk in the white and red, and uh, Marcus in the blue. And Marcus Johnson, substitute has to prove to us, and to Kirk Johnson, that he belongs against this quality of opposition. Well, right now, he ate a right hand over the top, and Kirk Johnson doesn't look like he wants to go round or test anything that he learned in the gym especially carrying around that 244 pounds of career high, as we mentioned. It opens up with a body attack and a right hand, more body attack. Right on Marcus Johnson. And he gave a look over to Carl Schroeder. I don't know if he was looking for help or trying to get a low blow call. A low blow call. He got him a little bit under the belt. Arnie, I think Kirk sees that soft middle, and he's working on the body as well as the head of Marcus Johnson. And already bringing down the left hand of Marcus Johnson as he's coming over the top. Again, Johnson replaced Israel Cole, who did not pass his physical. They found this out yesterday morning. And uh, still only a minute gone by here in a very fast first round. Mouthpiece out on Marcus Johnson. Three should wait for a lull in the action and then reinsert the mouthpiece. Marcus Johnson sticking his tongue out. Oh, but he just ate a left hook and should think twice about trying to taunt Kirk Johnson right now. Referee now giving a warning. And you know what? This was, I'm trying to look, this was Kirk Johnson's mouthpiece. Amazing because John, Kirk Johnson landed the punch. And then the mouthpiece came out, you assumed it was Marcus Johnson's mouthpiece. Marcus is over there getting him, he's getting a nice little rest right now because he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to help him. Kirk, well, Kirk Johnson's wearing two mouthpieces. <laughs> Kirk Johnson, of course, had elbow surgery following his rematch with Al Cole at a seven month layoff. Not showing any ill effects of it here. And now goes Johnson for the first time. And he bangs the bat, not happy with his performance. Perhaps getting up a little too quick here. These body punches that he's getting right now, wow, it's unmerciful. Carl Schroeder keeping a very good eye right now on Marcus Johnson. Just about 45 seconds still to go here in the first round. Kirk Johnson, an awesome finisher, 20 knockouts in his 28 wins. Marcus Johnson only stopped though one time in his pro career. That was by Willie Williams back in June of 98. Get that Hollywood ending right now. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, Arnie, this is uncharacteristic of Kirk Johnson. He's not usually this aggressive, but he knows he has a guy in front of him he can hurt, and he's going for it. And if he doesn't get it, I think that's surprising. Right now, in heavy survival mode, eating a lot of body shots, and somewhat of a worried look on the face of Marcus Johnson. All things being equal, he's going to survive here and hear the bell for round number two. There's the bell. That's the end of round one. First round action and take a look. It's gonna be the first knockdown. It's the body shot that really set everything up here. Well, Kirk knows that he has to get that body in order to get into that face, and right now he's doing an excellent job. A big yell. Seconds out, seconds out. 
We approach the second round. Round two. Round two of a scheduled 10 round of 34 to two. In terms of landed punches, Kirk Johnson, Marcus Johnson, you don't have to say much more. That tells the story of the fight thus far. Okay, Marcus is a tough guy. He's taking punishment. I think a few more body shots and he may be ready to pack it in. Oh, he hits a big right hand. It's right over the top because that left hand of Marcus Johnson is dropping down to his knee. Kirk is just waiting for that nice, nice punch to get right in there and not for the up. Showing a lot of poise, though. Kirk Johnson, the seven-year veteran, and the veteran, of course, of 29 professional fights. Told by Curtis Coach, just let it come. Take your time. If the workout comes, take the workout. But the interesting thing is if somehow, at this point, this goes into the later rounds, he's carrying around 244 pounds tonight, that may not be a place he wants to go. And it may not be a place he's going. Yeah, I think so. We, we referred to the uh, midsection, the ample midsection of Marcus Johnson. Kirk Johnson not in the best shape either. And he really needs to get rid of this guy now, or it's going to not look not so good for him. Interestingly enough, though, Marcus Johnson coming in 12 pounds lighter than his last fight. He's actually in pretty good shape for Marcus Johnson. I don't want to see what he looked like his last fight because he's got a nice belly on him. <laughs> I'll tell you, one thing that I looked at Marcus when I saw him up in Canada that he was uh, he just didn't quit. You're referring, of course, to his fight against another Olympian, Richard Bango. And Bango, what, about six foot eight? Yes. About your size. But he wasn't that accurate as Kirk Johnson right now. He dropped Bango in that fight, Rick? He dropped him once. Well, that's a better step. But a big left hook, though. What is keeping him up? He's not staying up. With the left hook, he drops him down. I think Schroeder wants to stop the fight, and he's waving it off. Good stoppage. Good stop. Seems to be an injury also to the right leg. As Johnson spits out his mouth, he's walking back to his corner. And a big and somewhat easy workout victory for Kirk Johnson against last second substitute Marcus Johnson. Kirk Johnson, of course, will remain undefeated at this Ladies and gentlemen, the time, two minutes even of the second round, the winner by technical knockout and still undefeated, Kirk Johnson. Johnson. All right, as Mark said, Knockout came at two minutes here in the second round, and again, improving to 29 and 0, 21 knockouts. But the real story here is what's in the future for Kirk Johnson. I know our Steve Farhood is in the ring. He's trying to corral Kirk, who seems to be congratulating or being congratulated by everybody in the audience here at the Hammerstein personally. But Steve's got it now. All right, Steve Farhood. Kirk Johnson, very quick work. It looked like 
from the start, your plan was to get rid of this guy very quickly. Yes, I wanted to get rid of this guy. First of all, I got to thank you, Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. This fight is dedicated to my late uncle, Leonard Frazier. And I love my mother, too. Well, my plan was to get him out there early. He got the type of style that can make a person look bad. And you know, me being number four in the world, and me being the next undisputed champion of the world, these type of styles I need to get out there. So that's what I want to do, and I did it. Look to me like once you decided to make a concerted effort to go to the body, that really discouraged him. That was pretty much it. Well, that's, you know, as an amateur, I was always a great body puncher. And as a professional, I'm a great body puncher. So whenever I start going to the body, I feel like I can beat any man. 244, you were a little heavier than usual, your career high. After you didn't get rid of him in the first round, did you feel you had to step back a little bit and pace yourself so you didn't punch yourself out? Well, you know, my, co my corner just told me to take my time. I'm getting too anxious. I'm trying to get him with one shot. So what I did, I stepped back, like you said, and I took my time. But as far as my weight being 244, you'll never see that again. Never. How, you've been very patient. Everybody knows you're one of the heavyweights with the best skills in the world. There have been problems. You've been through a lot of trainers, injuries. How, first of all, how's the elbow? You had surgery not that long ago. The elbow is doing very fine right now. And as far as me having a lot of trainers, I only had three trainers in my life. I spent two months with Teddy Atlas. I went right back to my old trainer, Curtis Coach, George Benton. He was ill, so that's the reason why we couldn't be together. So I'm not one of those type of guys that just want to change trainers. I did it for a real reason. The year 2000, is it Kirk Johnson's time finally? This is my time. This is my year. And all those guys who was in the position that I want to be in, hey, bring it to the table. Let's do it. Ken Lillian, co-manager of Kirk Johnson. Ken, talk a little bit about the future. I know you have a big fight you're hoping to close. Yeah, we're actually we're hoping to get a fight with Oleg Moskiev. Um, Kirk Johnson's ready to fight anybody in the world. We've been turned down by the Michael Grants, the David Tuas, the Shannon Briggs. He's the best fighter in the world, waiting for an opportunity. So, if you get Moskiev, he's a guy with a top five rating in a lot of the organizations. That'd be a pretty pretty big fight. We're looking at it hopefully in a month or two. Yes, definitely. We're we're trying to put it on the same fight with Lennox Lewis and Michael Grant, and we're, we're billing that as a eliminator for the next guy to fight for the world title. Good luck. I hope we see it. Thank you very much. Very good, Kirk Johnson. Very exciting second round knockout. Let's go back to uh, Arnie at ringside. Thank you, Steve. And boy, that would be a nice heavyweight explosion alumni matchup. Maskiev and Kirk Johnson. As you see, our uh, near capacity crowd here at the Hammerstein. And it is terrific to be in New York, not to mention the fact, Rick, that I don't have to fly any place. <laughs> this is a drive-in for me. <laughs> That's great. Which certainly makes my family happy.